The Ghanaian Times begins the morning and says government set up special security agency to combat crime groups, syndicate troublemakers. The president photographs here. And for some people declines the CID invitation, NDC Council of the Elders uh, backs him. That's the story. Also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, AMA action stores work on Office of Special Prosecutor uh, Office Complex. That's the Ghanaian Times. Daily Guide says it is a witch hunt. NDC dares CID over Ofosuampofo. Uh, NCA closes radio stations. And Aisha sister jams bail. That's the Daily Guide. The Daily Graphic Special Prosecutor quizzes Bisu Wusu. They were mentioned in Anasa's Galamse documentary. And NDC cries foul over Ofosuampofo. Police to deal with issue through legal process. The finder, NCA, we are enforcing the law. Radio Gold's license expired in 2000. Radio XYZ's license expired in 2016. That's on the finder. These are some of the stories we'll be taking a look at. My guest to do the talking this morning, Richard Ahiagba is a member of the MPP's team, and he's here. Richard, good morning. Very good morning, uh, sir. I hope your Friday has been good so far. Very promising, and there's a very important uh, program today at mm. the uh, uh, College of Surgeons. The Dankwa Institute it, program. Yes, uh, mm. today uh, to talk about the economy, how we can leverage uh, domestic uh, revenue mobilization mm. to underwrite our development quest. I think mm. it's important, and viewers can join. Grateful. That will be 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, 10. Okay, yeah. right. At uh, the College of Physicians and Physicians Surgeons. And surgeons. Yeah. Right. A member of the NDC is the team is also here. Ed Digital Maclo is also here with me. Good morning to your Friday has been good so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can only be hopeful mm -hmm. and uh, thankful to God at the same time. And good morning to my senior brother Richard here and your good self mm -hmm. and the uh, ardent uh, viewers of uh, New Day. Uh, we are confident that uh, this matters. As you are also aware, the incoming president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mohama is in London, Oxford, to deliver a lecture, basically to promote whatever it is that we are doing here in Ghana. Yeah. Grateful. Let's start the conversation this morning. Certainly, the Ufusampofu issue will dominate conversations this morning. The NDC has stated that it will not allow its national chairman, uh, Mr. Ufusampofu, to cooperate with the police in investigations linking him to recent happenings. Uh, the kidnappings and fire outbreaks at markets. In addition, the party said none of its former ministers and other appointees would cooperate in any inquisition on issues that took place when the party was in government. Uh, this is known uh, as the issue uh, broke out. Officers of the party said this. Uh, so yesterday, elders of the party held a press conference and said that Mr. Ofusuampofu was not under any ob compulsion obligation to assist the police in the investigations. He has no assistance to render to the CID as far as this matter is concerned. He said, adding that if the CID wishes to arrest our national chairman, they can proceed to do so. And they asked members to show solidarity with the uh, chairman. The Council of Elders uh, arguing that uh, this is a clear attempt to suppress dissenting views in the country. Alaji Mahama Idrisu said the persecution of the party's officials was malicious and intended to frustrate the work of the NDC and its mobilization towards the 2020 elections. The police, however, said, uh, according to Daily Graphic, that they will deal with the matter through the legal process. Edigi, let me give you the chance to start this conversation. Uh, uh, clearly, um, the party had reasons why they think the, the chairman should not appear before the CID. Absolutely. And um, I have indicated my great respect for the institution called the Ghana Police Service. Let it be placed on record that when it comes to the welfare of police officers, never in the history of this country, at least post-1992, has a party, a political party, consciously dedicated efforts towards promoting the welfare, the good image of the Ghana Police Service, than it happened. And in fact, I've always made this point that one of the first institutions that we place on the single spine salary structure 
had to do with the Ghana Police Service because we know the inherent risk associated with the work of policemen and women. And so we have always conducted our affairs with the Ghana Police Service. The record will also show, even the last presidential primary that we did, we used officers of the Ghana Police to ensure peace and order relative to the conduct of those primaries, and it went on smoothly. So our relationship with the Ghana police has always been one of the best and mutual. Now, it's important to make the point that the leadership of the CID under Madame Tiwa Adodankwa has now regrettably been reduced to the propaganda wing of the new patriotic party. And Nanado Dankwa Akufu Ado. Look, post Ayaso West Wagon, when officers and men clothed with the National Security Council attire went on shooting spray in the most bizarre, unprofessional manner, Ghana Police Service decided to leave those men and to look for the national chairman on the basis of a purported doctor tape for the sole purpose. When those things happened, the legal team advised the national chairman that consistent with our belief that the law must always take its course, cooperate with them. So together with us, we went to the Ghana Police Service we met the deputy director, CID, Mr. Chinebua, Nana Sasaku, lawyer Pente, and co. For whatever it is that they wanted from the national chairman, we unveiled him to that due process. Utmost respect to the institution called the Ghana Police Service. In fact, the day the NDC MPP met on this vigilante issue, the police again invited the national chair. We unveiled ourselves to them. They invited two of our national officers, Sami Jemfi and Kweku Bwain. Again, we took them to the Ghana Police Service to cooperate with them for whatever investigation. The first time when we appeared before them, and I recall right there, they came out with some charges. The chairman denied with a PowerPoint presentation, with an audio recording. They played it out, he denied it. Then they said, look, which will excuse them. So after about two hours, they came back. And now said, look, having consulted whoever, they are bringing two additional charges. And so they want further statement from the national chair. In fact, I sat by him. He denied those charges. Finally, what they had to do was that they called him back and said, look, they are preferring a charge of kidnapping Listen, ridiculous as it is, we said, Chairman, just go through the process. He again gave his statement denying it. Finally, we're there when the police called that they have filed a criminal case at the general jurisdiction and that the case has been assigned to Commercial Court 1. Once again, even though we had notice of this for almost a week, we unveiled ourselves. He went through the due process of law. Now, when the case commenced, we indicated to the courts that you have charged the chairman of having conspired with Kweku Bwahe. Mm. The fact you presented before the court, invoking the criminal jurisdiction of the court, reads, and I quote, that on the third day of February 2019, Chairman Ufoswan Pofo met Kweku Bwahe at the NDC headquarters and at that meeting, together with other communicators present, conspired to do A, B, C, D. Now, when you read even the charge sheet, you see the partisan manner in which the charge sheet was, you know, was couched, obviously to promote, quote unquote, an MPP agenda. Uh, but you see, uh, no, hold no, on. Pardon me. Mm. Since this particular case is before. Mm. Uh, no, your, so I, I do not want to yes, go yes, into it. But I just, no, I just want you to see certain right. trends. Mm. So we finally said, look, they claimed that there was conspiracy. The deputy national communication officer, Kweku Bwahe, 
was not in fact in Accra on the third day of February. So we subsequently then filed a notice of alibi. We went to court on the sixth day of May, that's Monday. Then the attorney general came to court and presented to us the evidence they intend relying on during the prosecution. We were clear in our minds that without evidence, for whatever it is, we are confident of the innocence of our national chairman. So when this ridiculous, dubious invitation under the signature of Madame Tiwa Adodankwa Ekufu, uh, 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 what's her name? Tiwa Adodankwa Ekufu. No, no, no. Oh, Tiwa Adodankwa. Yeah. Tiwa Adodankwa. That's not, That's not Kufu. Okay. Okay. We felt that, look, for whatever it is worth, it's important that we send a clear message to Madame Tiwa that the CID unit of the Ghana police will outlive her. She will come and she will go. But the Ghana police service, service will integrity will forever remain. What is the basis of this? To the extent that the Ghana police service who decide to weaponize its investigating processes for the sole purposes of promoting an MPP agenda, we find that at this point, there was no longer the need, the respect that we have for that sacred institution to continue to engage them. Because at this point, the CID unit has effectively been reduced to a unit only to one defame the national chairman, smear him with a ridiculous and wicked lie. And unfortunately, it is the CID that is promoting that lie. I was expecting that myself and my senior brother Richard, we can meet here and judge you and say whatever and move on. But when a credible institution of state, like the Ghana Police Service, a CID unit, headed by Madame Tiwa Dankwa Akufo, will now be the use or be used for the sole purposes of tarnishing. And why are we saying that it is to tarnish his image? Okay, wrap up from let me get yes, with I you. Yes, I It's to tarnish his image is simple. Today, myself and my brother here, or any MPP communicator, if there is a discussion on insecurity in this country, all the MPP communicator will do is to pull out the statement or the letter from Tiwa Dodankwa where the CID now makes a categorical statement that their intelligence, you see, is different. If you are saying that, look, ABCD has said, and so you are calling me to assist you. This one, the police say, their intelligence relative to uncovering the fires, assassins, and kidnapping. Whoever it is has said that the national chairman has engaged them to do that for the sole purposes of creating fear and panic. What it does is that it takes the eye from the incompetence that has so far been shown by Madame Tiwa Dodankwa as the CID boss to the NDC. So that instead of government being responsible for the security of the people in this country, what government will now be doing is that, look, even the CID says, it is the NDC that is responsible for the fires. Okay. But before I go on, so that you can just one minute, so my brother will come in. Look, we have a CID boss who for the first time will call a press conference at nobody's prompting to do what? To say that these young ladies that have been kidnapped, she knows their whereabouts. To the extent that even the Attorney General of this Republic found that conduct to be unacceptable. Because we do know, when somebody kidnaps someone and you are even in the process of negotiating the release of the person, you keep the entire process with a certain level of confidentiality. So that what you do is that you have a liaison officer to deal directly with the family members of those so affected. Now you have a CID officer basically to please the ruling government comes out, that's a press conference, to say that these cases have been found. Then a pro-government newspaper daily guy comes another time and says, look, the girls are even in the country, basically toying with the emotions 
of the family members associated. Today we have been told that the CID boss was misled by the BNI in coming to that conclusion. Now the question is, if the CID boss can be misled by the BNI, it tells you that any time you get any information, you must first verify that information okay. before you proceed to put pen on paper okay. in the manner that seeks to tarnish the image of Chairman of Oswampovo. Under grateful. the circumstance, mm. we will not, we will not, if they want, at best, is to arrest him. Grateful. Beyond arrest, you detain him. We'll go to court and face the full rigors grateful. of the law. Richard, so uh, uh, Mr. Oswampovo's uh, legal uh, person says that his invitation <coughs> will be prejudicial to his ongoing trial on the matter. Again, he says that uh, any citizen of a country has a constitutional duty to assist the law enforcement agencies in the discharge of their mandate. But in this particular case, what has happened, the invitation is a gross abuse of the investigative and prosecutorial powers of police as a public institution. That is what EDUG uh, has just uh, uh, reiterated here. Is, is, are they right? Oh, the the NDC or Mr. Osampo? Yes, and his lawyers. They think that inviting him will be prejudicial to what the first trial he's undergoing now. Right. Good morning again to you and uh, to my good brother here uh, and to your viewers. Uh, good morning to the President, His Excellency, and uh, uh, all uh, my good people in Ketu South. Um, right. Extreme dramatization, mm, unreasonable characterization of a simple, decorous, civil invitation to help mm. in the process of building uh, consensus and seeking to solve problems that concerns us in this country. A civil responsibility all of us must take seriously. The invitation was extended to Mr. Fosu Ampofo contingent upon certain uh, intelligence that the police have picked up, uh, which has to do with him. Uh, and so there's a backdrop uh, of uh, uh, certain things that he has said. Uh, there's a character or more or less a comment that is made that makes it necessary that, okay, well, uh, maybe you have foreknowledge about something like this, or maybe you can help us, you know, in trying to resolve an issue that concerns all of us. I see that to be um, I don't want to use uh, the word, but I see that to be an abdication of his civil responsibility mm. to help in, in building uh, the kind of peace and security that they uh, are in hurry every day to say is, is not present and the more has to be done to bring about security, which is what the police is doing, but they are failing to cooperate. Uh, so is he bright? The first person you lead, if you're a leader, mm. is yourself. If you fail to lead yourself, you cannot lead anybody. So for me, in very simple terms, mm, the NDC, the Council of Elders, led by very renowned and people who have given their life to serve this country, uh, perhaps at the very height of uh, their service to this country, have failed to lead themselves. And in doing so, have failed all of us. To say that a simple invitation to come and assist in the investigation or answer questions uh, has resulted in the groundswell of NDC machinery, the kind of energy, the mobilization that brings out the Council of Elders to sit write a letter, hold a press conference, say one person, a citizen invited to answer question will not go. We all NDC will feel attacked by that. For me, it's a failure to lead oneself. The NDC has a responsibility as a political party, we know that, to help shape the policy, the agenda of this country, which for me, if we are focused on what this president is doing, is to build a better future for our posterity, okay? 
That is the agenda. That always in politics is the calling of any generation. We do things that make things better for those who succeed us. So an invitation to help has become a whole political discussion that we have to waste our time on, that we have to expend resources to call very serious people who have sacrificed their time to serve this country, to hold a press conference to say, Chairman Ofosu Ampofu is not going to CID. Needless. Very, very unfortunate. In fact, very disappointing. A very terrible and bad precedent. I heard the former president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, the flag bearer of the MEC, talk about precedent. Focusing on the negative and perhaps the non-exemplary display of elevation of the idea that we are creating some kind of precedent in this country by inviting some, a citizen to help police. That's the kind of precedent he wants to focus on. But right this morning, I want to submit to all of us that the better precedent that we need to be setting is that if the police Legitimate law enforcement uh, agency of this country, which my brother told us they are interested in, they have invested in, and they respect, but suddenly they don't see the need to respect Not the same one. institution anymore. Not this one. You see, right. What my brother is also going wrong here again, the, the, the institution is not a bad individual. Now, if you have decided to wage war on that individual, Mm -hmm. You don't attack the institution. I agree with you that they have their political motive for doing so. But I guarantee you, Bright, that Madame Tiwa Adodankwa does not head any propaganda wing in the MPP. She does. Bright, I want to also suggest to you this morning, I hope my brother will pick it and the rest of his <laughs> NDC people, that the MPP, the New Patriotic Party, we don't have any propaganda wing. We are not known for it. <laughs> If there is anything, they have one. They used to be propaganda secretary mm. in the NDC, who is now the communication officer. They are still struggling every so often they call propaganda. We don't have one. Okay? And Madame Tiwa Adodankwa is a legitimate police officer who entered the service not yesterday, not in 2017. Uh, she was in the service during their time when they were proud of the police service. Uh -huh. She we did vital that. work. Sorry. She did vital work for the police when they were in government. So what happened? What is happening, I can tell you, Bright, is their NDC is failing to lead themselves. And that is a terrible danger we face as a people going into 2020. And people who cannot lead themselves are seeking to lead this country. That is the danger. If you cannot lead yourself, by virtue of democracy, we're going to go. You have a flag bearer, and therefore you're going to assemble and put things on paper, and people are going to choose. But this group of people have failed to lead themselves. What is the next thing they are raising is prejudicial to the case in court. That's the main reason why they said he won't go. Total invalid argument. The premise of that argument is flawed. He's the lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. But what's the basis? What if a police called you, you have rights. They invite you, you have rights, mm. okay? To save us all this political tension. And if you have astute lawyers, which I think, my brother, I don't know if you are part of the legal team. Yes, Eva, yesterday, I, mm. I had to go and deliver the letter. Okay, are they please? Uh, yes. Okay, which is f fantastic if you want to do that, even though the position for me, I disagree. But, right, if you have to do that, go to the police uh, or uh, CID office, you, Mr. Fusu and Pofu, and your lawyers, go there. You have rights, okay? If he asks you a question, if you don't want to answer, you don't want to answer. You have to, if you think that question is going to uh, you know, be detrimental to your position in court, if you're going to commit to yourself, you don't answer the question. You have lawyers. They will advise you on the spot. Say, that's one, don't. So why do you create this tension as though when you go there, they're going to just open your mouth and take everything out of it? Let me ask you this. You, you raised an issue of political tension. Could the police have also done this in a way not to have triggered what we are, we, we are in now? Right. The police have done excellently the only thing they could have done. 
The alternative to writing him nicely in a civil way come would have been go there, marshal, and pull him away and arrest him. That's what the NDC is asking to be done. So for them, the escalation of tension in this country, they see it as profitable for them. Because then they have the, 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 the leverage to come and sit on TV, on radio, and say, oh, unrest and insecurity. I don't see that to be patriotic. I don't see that answering the call that the president made to all of us, okay, on January 7, 2017, to say that let's all engage as citizens, not spectators. In fact, the NDC is not even engaging as spectators. They are engaging as troublemakers, people who are fomenting tension in this country. How in the name of God are you saying, simple invitation, come, and you are not going? This morning, my only plea to his, uh, his Honorable uh, Samuel of Oswampo for this morning is to lead himself, is to lead, because I know he's a leader. What they are saying yesterday, if you read the letter they put out, they are trying to incite their members. They're trying to say we have four, uh, four million or so members. We're talking about 30 or so million Ghanaians. Whose destinies are tied and that is why you're you understand uh, so, no, no, Edu Jalahim, he's, so, he's, 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 he's wrapping up so Edu Jalahim, he's, so, he's wrapping up so so bright we should not okay try to superimpose our parochial interests on the larger interest of this country you are talking about President Brett. One thing I have to learn this morning is how to really push and get more time because he did so, and I, I, I was oh, following. Oh, oh, you see, the, 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 every the, one of you has spoken <laughs> ten minutes, so <laughs> that's right. it. Right, <laughs> you see, have equal time. Okay, he so spoke Brett, ten minutes. You are you're just hitting ten minutes. Okay, so mm -hmm. let, let me hit ten minutes. Wrap up. Right. So the truth of the matter is this: that the situation we're in now is needless. What I would rather for us to be talking about this morning, okay? is free SHS. How that is going to change the destiny of this country 10, 20 years down the road. I want us this morning to talk about one district, one factory. How that has the potential to solve the unemployment problems we face in this country. I want us to talk about one village, one dam, to see how that is going to help our people, how, is, how that is going to help grow agriculture. I want us to talk about uh, increasing uh, rice production in this country, how that is going to help my people in the Volta region of Vaime and, uh, and along the stretch uh, where we can grow and begin to engage our people. Bright, I want us this morning to talk about the issues that will engage our children 10 years, 20 years from now when they come to maturity, when they occupy this space you and I occupy today, to try to do their best to push Ghana's agenda but forward. But if we don't have security, can we talk about these? But you see, w this situation we have, okay, the, the appearance of uh, tension in this country is created by people. So what I'm saying, I'm saying to them that desist from that. Allow Mr. Fosu and okay. to lead himself hmm. by way of uh, uh, becoming a citizen. Go to the police, answer the question. If you can't answer, you think that question is going to make you compromise you for the case that you're answering in court. They don't answer. Tell them nicely, I cannot. But don't, by all means, don't mobilize, okay, your council of elders to create the impression, okay, right, this is very dangerous. What the NDC is doing is to tell us, oh, okay, if you do something, we're also going to do something irresponsible. The laws must be applied. The mm. right things must be done today, not to say don't do it today, so I will also not do something tomorrow. It is about the people of Ghana, not about me, okay. not about the it's president, it's not about Mr. Samuel Ofosu Ampofu. It's about doing we, right for Ghana, right? I'm That's grateful. what we have to do. Richard, I'm quick when, reaction. Yes, exactly. Don't you see, too when long, my, so my, my, to, my, my senior brother Richard makes the point about leading oneself. He does not know who Samuel Ofosu Ampofu is. Ghana's, but I know what he's doing please. now. Ghana's, he's democ leading. Ghana's democracy, as you see today, the likes of Bufo Swampofu, from DC, Infantiaqua, local government minister, I know several that. of those positions. So when it comes to contributing to the development of this country, Samuel Bufo Swampofu is among a very few people mm -hmm. who have sacrificed to bring Ghana where it is today. 
two, you talk about police invitation. Your current is it, is police, it a full reaction? Because uh, I would have no, 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 yes, no. We're just using two minutes each yes, because okay, we need to move your, the your current national chair. The police had cause to invite him on this issue of dissipation of party fans. When uh, Chairman Afoku lodged a complaint before the police ID, he told them he declined the invitation. Is, is, that, is that why no, no, so, no, no, somebody no, is also not no. going? Is, is that the reason? All, first of all, no, Edu, is that the no. reason why it's not going? There is a constitutional requirement that under no circumstance, mm. in fact, there is a requirement against well, self-incrimination and all that you can call them. Now, you put out a letter and say, I should come and assist you. In your own words, your intelligence have concluded what it is. No, he didn't say Please, that. read the letter. I read to, it. To, um, what, oh, uh, uh, to what end are you calling me? To assist you as what? As a suspect, an accomplice, or what exactly? And you leak this particular letter to the media to weaponize your investigative processes for the sole purposes of partisanship. So, for instance, you then come and say, oh, when there are insecurity issues, blame the NDC for it. That is dubious. That is not honorable. Under no circumstance, when an institution or state is reduced to this law, citizens have the right to stop it. You cannot tell me, for instance, okay. that those men who were put in the national security t shirt came and shot directly into citizens. And today, our president has a problem with the leak of the report and not the persons who shot life ammunitions into ordinary Ghanaian citizens. You are saying it is the NDC that is fomenting trouble. What Ghanaians ought to say is that on the 31st day of January, but for the timely intervention of Chairman Ufosu Ampofu, we do not know what would have happened on that day. Because our president, who is the chair of the National Security Council, deployed his men to recklessly fire life ammunition. And he's keeping the report. What is he doing with the report? Energy, I'm grateful. Our president who believes in accountability is not willing to put the report minutes, out. And, then we'll and you talk about the, the NDC issue. leading itself. OK. Richard, you need that message. Right. Quickly. If you thought I needed that message, you would have given it. <laughs> okay, so I gave it to you. Okay. You must comply. It's good for you. It's good for the NDC. Okay. Right. Now, let's talk seriously. He, he talks about the credentials of uh, Mr. Samuel Fosu mm. Absolutely. He served this country. The only thing I was saying is that he should continue to serve this country, mm. not stop at the point. Because his action in this critical moment amounts to stopping to serve this country. No. He ceased to lead no. himself. In other words, he cannot lead anybody. His lawyers are you understand? Lawyers. Now let me tell you, <laughs> he talks about his credentials, so let me talk about an individual. They have maligned in this country. Oh. His Excellency the President. Yes. Yes. Another person who served this country with his life, his resources, 40 years, put his life, his life on the line. I always credit His Excellency uh, jo uh, John, uh, Jerry John Rawlins for you know, the coming into force of uh, the Fourth Republic. Go and see what the likes of Elizabeth or him and Co. said about Jerry Rawlins. That can I, um, can I, can I, can I, you understand? Let's let, let, let wrap up. You then. understand? I'm, I just started, right? Yeah. I, have, I shouldn't run. No, let, let's move on. We, we're running, we're running <laughs> right. out of time. I have said so. It's just about, a reaction. Yes. We're running out of time. I have said so about uh, former President Rawlings. Okay? The same should be said about His Excellency Anado Danko Kufaro. Because this is an individual who put his body on the line in very difficult times in this country to push the agenda of this fourth republic. <laughs> you understand? So when you are talking about serving this country, he has served this country. The only difference which we need to note, even though the NDC and my brother this morning went on a tangent of maligning the president, despite, no. despite his incredible service to the thing I have to say in continuation, comparing him to Mr. Samuel Fuzwapofo, though the comparison doesn't stand, is that he has continued to lead. He is still leading. With the all die be die statement? Yeah, you understand. He is leading this country in ways that, in fact, I tell you, Bright, the NDC need to measure up. 
Tell me, tell me. No, no, okay, okay it's please. Well. Okay, right, right. Yeah, Rachel, 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 wrap up and let's yes, let's yes. jump into another if, if stop No, no, no wrap, wrap up quickly. Right. Just right. ten seconds. Wrap right. Up. Yeah. If you see a president, okay, who when you look at the ideological positions, you think that okay, we're more leaning uh, right, is one who has implemented a social redistributive policy in this country. In, in this country. In the name of free SHS. That is an individual who is continuing to lead. Hmm. That is an individual who is not ideological, but is leading in ways that is characterological, leading this country continuously and forever because that's what we must do. Mr. Fosuampofo must learn from this. I'm he must grateful. not come to a moment where he thinks that he has served. Oh, please, grateful. please, you know. please. I, I, he must not come to a point where he <laughs> thinks he's led enough and therefore stop leading I'm to create the tension we have in this country. NDC bears sole responsibility for this tension. I'm we have. grateful. It's Ghanaian needless. Times Pink 7 says that two radio stations uh, closed down Radio Gold, Radio XYZ. Uh, the NCA uh, says that they are only uh, implementing a ruling by the uh, Electronic Communications Tribunal. Um, uh, it said that it, is, it will continue to shut down radio stations that have defaulted in perhaps renewing their licenses. Radio Good, Radio XYZ um, are the first two to go. Um, it's, a, it's a long story, but I think we don't have a lot of time, but let's uh, start from here. Richard, so let me start this conversation with you. Uh, this is where we are. Uh, NCA says that it's only implementing a ruling by a tribunal ordering that those who fail to renew licenses must not be allowed to operate. Yes. Uh, but uh, again, the uh, GIPA, which is the Independent Broadcast Association, is suggesting that um, the manner in which it was done is, was, is too harsh. What did he suggest? That the manner in which yeah. the NCA did the, the closure mm -hmm. is too harsh. They are suggesting that they could have continued to speak to these radio stations. Till when? Well, they didn't say that. Yeah. See, so when you say that, it's, it's one of those things that is easy. I want to join him to say, let's find other ways instead of closure. Mm -hmm. Because the NCA is not interested in closing people down. Because after all, they are the ones issuing the spectrum uh, frequency to people. You understand? So their business is not shutting radio stations down, but to issue frequencies and people comply with the terms under which they receive those authorizations and continue to use it. You understand? Uh, I, I was I was saddened yesterday, and I continue uh, to uh, support uh, calls or ideas to help resolve this issue. Uh, but you see, Radio Gold, I listened to Radio Gold for a long time. It's been around for a very, very long time. Mm. Uh, I have good friends uh, who worked there before. They no longer work there. XYZ, I have good friends who work there. Uh, so the, the, the point here for me is to try to say that what are we trying to do as a people mm. in building this country? What is our motive? What is the grand agenda? Uh, it is to create a space that there, there will be fairness, uh, in terms of how we deal with each other, and, and that fairness translates into uh, being responsible, okay, and, and taking uh, the space that we, we, we share seriously in understanding that we, we have laws, okay, that conditions our behavior. So what, I, what this is all about is the expiration of their authorization. Their exactly. Right. And, and before... Uh, you, you set up or when you went for this authorization, the terms and when you have to, what you have to do to continuously use that frequency uh, is, is, is clearly spelled out. You have a five year period of author, uh, author, authorized use and three months before the end of that fi uh, fifth year, you will take steps to renew your, your, uh, your authorization so you can continue to use it. Now, you have to do that because, right, uh, the, the, the spectrum space we have is limited, okay? It is not uh, um, uh, more or less, uh, more or less, uh, uh, and more, it's, 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 it's a finite product, is mm. what I'm trying to say. To the extent that we, we would have me, have a frequency that I'm using, is a national asset. So I, I am supposed to uh, legitimize my use of it 
based on the, the laws that defines I its usage. So any time you fail to do that, then really you are you are taking um, a national asset without complying with the necessary regime. So the painful thing here is this: that the I wonder why uh, Red, uh, Radio Gold, uh, good station that I listen to, uh, would not try to uh, renew its uh, authorization, knowing how critical they are to to the the uh, the space that we we all uh, will all enjoy. And and, and if for some reason uh, the they have forgotten, and for so long, I think from what I'm hearing, Bright, is that since 2000, okay, their authorization expired. Mm -hmm. That's what reports are saying. Uh, XYZ since 2016. What, what enables you to allow this thing to go? Uh, Bright, elsewhere, this would have been uh, a criminal thing because you are using an asset that you don't have legitimate rights to use. It's a terrible thing to do, right? Mm. Right. Okay. Radio Gold is is a good station, but then the f management have failed, in in my view, in trying to uh, be good citizens, corporate citizens, to ensure that today I I would tune into Radio Gold on my way to to your studios and things of that nature. I am at the disadvantage because of that today. So uh, I think that the rest of the radio stations out there and, and individuals out there who are running radio stations must learn that this is a property that belongs to the people of Ghana. And if it is something that is finite, and you know, in fact, right, the understanding... Quickly, I, yes, let me get to you. The understanding I'm having now is the, the demand for frequency is such... In, in, is, 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 is overwhelming. Like there's an average of uh, seven or so, uh, you know, applications for frequency a week. You understand? So when you have that, you must guard it jealously. You understand? To ensure that you have the legitimate use of it. So unfortunately, it has to come to this. But let's begin to understand that we have to be responsible. Okay. And all these radio stations out there, they must begin to regularize. Any failure to do so, one, right, is uh, seizing uh, due uh, revenue to the state and is using state assets without permission. And I don't think they should continue like that. Okay. Eddie. What, what do you make of it? You know, uh, the NCA has you raised know, issues. Uh, right. All over the world, what despots and dictators do is that they clamp down on the media disguised as law enforcement. Globally. Globally. So they legitimize whatever they do with the gap of law enforcement. The NCA today is making reference to the decision of the uh, telecommunication electronic tribunal, the tribunal that sits right just uh, a few, just behind the Ghana police service. I have appeared before that tribunal in a similar manner because the NCA in 2017 decided this same clampdown and so Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, GIBA, among other radio stations, took the matter before the tribunal, chaired by a respected retired Supreme Court judge, Justice Datiba. I appeared before that panel for a particular radio station in the Western region. We put our case together. The tribunal ruled that the decision by the NCA to impose those penalties on the various was without any legal justification whatsoever, and therefore quashed all those penalties, and instructed the NCA to go back and go through the, the, uh, the renewal processes. Now, this is it. In the specific case of Radio Gold, the law offices of Bram Labi and, and whatever, as we speak, are in continuous engagement with NCA. So what my, 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 and obviously I noticed that you're speaking from very lim limited uh, in terms of the facts, is that Radio Gold has been engaging and have sent all their documents to the NCA for the sole purpose of renewing their licenses. They have, in fact, done that.
The posturing of the National Communication Authority, headed by Joe Anoche, is to frustrate this process of the renewal. And I've had several instances of writing letters to the NCA just to ensure these processes go through. Sometimes when I look back, I go back and read Nanado Danko Kufado's argument before the Supreme Court in the Radio I case and the conduct of state agencies under his presidency. I come to the realization that if you want to know the true nature of a man, give him political power. Just give him power and he will show you his true nature. The NCA today, and you see, curiously, curiously, these two radio stations were carrying live the press conference by the Council of Elders of the NDC in respect of this Ofoso and Puffo matter. With a Gestapo, you know, star, stormed the radio station, accompanied by policemen. Mr. said it's, it. it's, it's, it's normal. They, that's anywhere they're going, you, they have you, you know, That is what I'm world. saying that it's, it's all normal. over the world. What people do, tyrannical people do, is that they justify, they normalize wrongdoing. Because, SYZ, I do know that their officers have been engaging and they have written to NCA, Radio Go, they have written to NCA, submitted a full complement of their document, incorporation, their statement of account, several of these documents to NCA. Why, in the name of God, would you use policemen? storm the radio station as though something untoward, when already they have established a communication link with you. It's a simple matter. Under the leadership of Nanado Danko Ekufu Ado, today, today, the harassment of so-called perceived dissent is not only limited to the question of Radio Gold and XYZ. We are all uh, you know, aware of the fact that today as we speak, Judging from what Professor Kakare of the West African Media Foundation has said, Manasseh Azuri had to be exiled to South Africa. Uh, hold on, you, hold you, on, you, please. You please, don't please, believe please. in the NCA's suggestion that, I mean, these two stations are not the only ones and that there are other no, stations. No, I'm, I'm coming that, there. That, and you will uh, see the orientation. Mm. You will see the orientation. Okay, quickly. We're, we're if it had to do there. with infraction of law, like mm. I pointed out, the NCA Act, there is always a last resort. When all avenues Which are not, what? please, no, when no, no, all no, avenues are not result? exhausted, like mm -hmm. I indicated, mm -hmm. what you do is that one, you can even write to the station telling them that you are giving them up to so and so. If you do not put your house in order, we will engage you in this. Like I told you, Radio Gold Management have already been dealing with NCA through a reputable law firm. Outside this, you storm the radio station, you act in this regular. In fact, I, a letter I wrote to NCA last year, they are yet to even respond to that letter. So what I am saying is that Joe Anoche and others must know that tyranny, tyranny, the question of tyranny, it is like every natural resource. It is never limited. Whatever it is, it is as old as creation and it will come back to you. When you what, least what, what the government can be used so to, to deal with this? That is why I told you that uh, the matter uh, went uh, before a tribunal. The so tribunal gave a roadmap. All these radio stations have complied with the roadmap. They have sent their letters for renewal of their licenses. The NCA has taken a particular posturing. For instance, if you are saying renewal, am I going to keep my same the frequency, frequency 90.5? Are you going to well, change? He says they could so these are the reapply for fresh so, spectrum, you know, that yes. suggesting that ah, they could lose their exactly. Uh, frequency. So how are you okay. going to tell so, Radio Go that by reason of a renewal, you are going to lose your ninety point five frequency or whatever? These are the, so it calls for what dialogue, right. engagement. Okay. You don't do this. Right. You stop the radio station, Gestapo yeah, star, no, no, to no. ensure that no. yes, we are in power. Right. We okay. have power. Right. Richard, thirty so seconds. Party, I have no, power no, no, this, this is probably, a regret. They need more than. No, 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 right, no, right. On, on a more on a more serious note, mm. I, I, so I, I I I seize the way from getting into the legal stuff uh, because I feel that the responsibility. Uh, it's part, unfortunate. The responsibility part it's is more important okay. to be able to make sure that the business you are doing 
the the central piece of it is your frequency. How do you forget? They never did. Please, 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 please. No, no, no. Don't do that. No, no, Brian. No, 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 no. Please, no, no, please. Communication no, between the, 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 the no, radio no, no, no. Just, just allow me. You can't allow me. say that allow they me. forgot. But, you but know, the thing expired since no. 20, please, 20, please, 2000. Please, please, please. And the regulator... And please, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It was in fact, do you know that in oh, the specific Edugy, case of Radio S Y Z, please, 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 wrote to them look, look. to come and cover a program oh, they'll be yeah, doing yeah, this. I, I, I've seen that letter too. Right. Okay. I so mean, so I mean, that, uh, Richard, it, 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 it is sometimes a bit uh, confusing when look, let's the be fair, uh, station has an expired license. No, 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 please. That's not even the point. Going forward. Wait, wait, wait. Right, right. Very important. Quickly, quickly, because let's let's decouple. Yes, important. Let's couple the issue of radio station failing to do the business thing of renewing their frequency mm. authorization mm. from mm. the media operation we need to do that this ingeniously my brother did couple the two i want i want to draw that line now let's also yes yes because they are, they are not linked at all that the next thing bright we need to know is that this issue in 2017 or uh, 2017 or so when the original uh, effort was made to close down certain stations there was an engagement okay where the NCA levies on fines some of these radio stations went to court and the court ruled okay the matter oh, and I'm the court sorry. Richard I don't have time so no, 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 let me demand for you, you no, 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 yes, no, no, I'm looking at how to deal with it yes so briefly the, 10 seconds so the point the point is this that the NCA is only implementing the court ruling they, which they says they cannot they cannot oh, dialogue uh, uh, Richard they have they cannot dialogue as energy is saying dialogue how okay I'm grateful Richard Ahiagba is a member of the NPP Eddie Tamaklu is a member of the NDC's team. 